Cube. My name is Varun Boyle, Senior Regional Marketing Specialist for Bentley Systems India. The Year in Infrastructure Awards is an exciting and well-regarded global competition that recognizes advancements in infrastructure. The conference and awards will be organized between October 12th to 15th in Vancouver, Canada. The deadline to submit your projects is now extended till May 22nd. We recognize that present remote work environment presents productivity challenges for your design teams. To support infrastructure engineering firms forced to work from home, we are making ProjectWise 365 available to everyone and waiving subscription fees throughout September 30th, 2020. Before we begin, we wanted to cover a few housekeeping items at the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets you can see. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most of your desktop space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. If you have questions during the webcast, you can submit, the, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We'll try to answer these during the webcast. But if a fuller answer is needed or we run out of time, it will be answered later by email. Please know we do capture all questions. A copy of today's slide deck and additional help materials are available in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or bookmark any links that you may find useful. For the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions running in the background that could cause issues. Webinars are bandwidth intensive, so closing any unnecessary browser tabs will help conserve your bandwidth. The webcast is being streamed through your computer, so there is no dial-in number. For the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or your headsets are turned on and the volume is up so that you can hear the presenters. Some networks cause slides to advance more slowly than others, so locking off your VPN is recommended. If your slides are behind, pushing F5 on your keyboard will refresh the page. You can find additional answers to some common technical issues in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. An on-demand version of this webcast will be available approximately one day after the webcast, and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier. Please do note, at the end of the presentation, there will be a poll question. We encourage all participants to fill in their details. You can download the certificate post-webinar. The speaker for today's session is Luke Cheng. Luke has over 30 years of experience in transportation planning and traffic engineering specializing in travel demand forecasting for passenger and freight systems. His professional experience ranges from technical modeling to project management in both public agencies and private consulting firms. Over to you, Luke. Thank you, Varun, and good morning, everyone. I say good morning because uh, I'm sharing with you, speaking to you from my home just outside of Orlando, Florida. So it is 7.04 a.m. in the morning for me, and I'm very happy to be able to speak to so many of you from all over the world, uh, although most of you are in India. So I'm really happy to be able to, to do this and share my professional experience with all of you. Um, so hope you can all hear me okay. Let's move on. Um, just want to show my picture and let you know who I am a little bit. Um, just like Varun has uh, already mentioned, I have over 30 years experience as a traffic engineer and transport planner. I just want to highlight my career is kind of unique because I have worked both in public agencies as well as in private consulting companies. Geographically, I actually have covered many states in the U.S. as well as uh, many Asian countries uh, doing projects and also uh, 
kind of, uh, especially the last few years with City Labs, I made many friends uh, professionally uh, in, in our line of business in Asia. So moving right along, uh, m- many of you know Ben Lee, but for some of uh, you that are not familiar with, with Ben Lee, I just want to uh, give a very f- quick introduction. Uh, you can see that infrastructure is our mission, Ben Lee's mission. We are a global leader in providing architects, engineers, geospatial professionals, contractors, and owner operators with software solutions for advancing the design construction and operation of infrastructure. We are committed to the development of integrated software applications that can also incorporate uh, interoperate with third party offerings. The information generated by these applications can therefore be easily shared among all disciplines in the project delivery teams, as well as by operational professionals and owner operators. Uh, let's see, this is in owner operator organizations across the entire infrastructure life cycle. The result is more effective project delivery and enhanced assets performance. Next slide. And, and you can see we're present in many countries. Uh, you actually have offices in uh, 90 countries, or we are uh, 90, uh, 90 offices throughout 41 countries, almost in every continent. Um, we provide solutions for project delivery, the entire life cycle of the project to assets performance. And I'm sure many of you are already a Bentley customer using some of our different softwares. Um, uh, Bentley is a leader in our industry, as you can see here, 44 of the top 50 ENR firms are our customer using our project-wise and our asset-wise in the Bentley 2016 Infrastructure 500, 25 out of the top 50 owners are using our asset-wise. Um, City Labs is a newcomer to the Bentley family. Uh, Bentley System acquired City Labs in October 2019. So I'm a relatively newcomer to this big global family. Uh, City Lab was a software company specializing in software tools for transportation and land use planning. City Labs flagship product is called Cube. We are very excited with the integration of Cube into Bentley's offering in the future, we foresee Cube's integration with Bentley's road and rail tools, such as open roads design products, SOYs and open rail. Uh, Cube is now a product under mobility team of Bentley's digital cities department. We are very excited about the opportunities to provide mobility analytics tools and data for mobility management, smart cities initiatives, and iTwin digital service. If you go to www.benly.com, our company's uh, website, you'll be able to see and find City Labs at the brand under the product tab. And then under City Labs, there are uh, one of the main product is called Cube. So you're welcome to go to our website to find out more information. Uh, this presentation is to provide a basic introduction of travel demand modeling and Cube, especially for those of you that are not doing uh, modeling, we call non-modeler. Uh, I will first talk about what is travel demand modeling and what it is for. Then I will share a brief introduction of Cube and who are using Cube in Asia. I'll give you some examples of the uh, Cube models from various countries in Asia. And I will end by sharing a little bit on what is beyond Cube. Uh, These are new mobility analytic tools we have recently developed for the US and Canada and are ready to bring them to Asia and the rest of the world. So here is my very simple non-technical definition of what a travel demand model is. 
A travel demand model is a set of mathematical relationships describing when, why, and how people and good move within and in and out of a geographic area. The most common use modeling methodology is what we call a four-step model approach. The first step is trip generation, second is trip distribution, then mode choice, and finally route choice. The geographic area may be a small area of the CBD or an entire city or a metropolitan region, a state, a country, or even a multinational region such as region along the Mekong River Delta and so on. There are three basic components of a travel demand model. Number one is the input. And the basic input into a travel demand model is social economic data, mainly population and employment, population and jobs. By traffic analysis zone, typically we'll divide up the study area, either the city or a state uh, into what we call traffic analysis zone. And we need population and jobs data from uh, for each of these zones. And typically these are coming from the planning department. The second major input that is required for a travel demand model is highway and transit network representations. We devise a way of representing highway network and bus network, and metro network uh, in the computer. The model itself is a set of parameters and relationships uh, describing how people make trips. And for example, some of these parameters are number of trips produced per household or number of trips produced per job. And uh, the, the relationship also includes sensitivities of choices to time and cost, how people choose between different mode, including walking, biking, uh, driving along, carpooling, or taking the bus, taking the metro, things like that. And and if they all, if they decided to take uh, to drive, which route would they take? Uh, these are all are a set of relationships describing the sensitivity of choices over time and cost. And how do we know we're doing a good job in, mon uh, in uh, kind of modeling or simulating the reality. So typically a lot of data will be required in, from the observed data. Uh, we'll have to conduct survey, household survey. So uh, nowadays we actually got a lot of data from the cell phone uh, data uh, to uh, use those as observed data to calibrate, to see how good we, <coughs> excuse me, to see how good we are, we are doing with all the um, uh, modeling that we're doing. Uh, the, the outputs from the travel demand model that we're looking for uh, is network with volumes on each link. This is a measurement uh, for us to see how our infrastructure are doing in terms of meeting the travel demand. Where are the congestions are? Do we need to widen certain roadway and bridges? Do we need to construct an entire new freeway or do uh, do we need to have more buses or metro lines? So these are uh, the, the output that we mainly are interested in uh, doing travel demand modeling. Uh, a byproduct, very important byproduct of the uh, model is what we call matrices of trips, commonly referred to as OD tables. Because uh, remember, we, if we divided up the entire city into 1,000 zones, then we'll be able to see 1,000 by 1,000 metrics of how many people going from zone 100 to zone 201, and so on and so forth. And that is a very good information in terms of giving us an idea of the travel patterns uh, of your region. 
Besides the uh, four-step models that I mentioned earlier, trip generation, distribution, mode choice, and route choice, there are several other more advanced or complicated methodologies. However, over 90% of the travel demand models in use in the world today are still what we call classic four-step models. Uh, because other methodology will require more computing power, more complicated, more data. Uh, so not a, a lot of travel demand modeling users are, have uh, switched to that other mo methodologies yet. Travel demand models may be built to model all or some of the most shown on this slide, depending on the purpose of the project. So uh, if it's a bicycle model, so uh, you will have a bicycle uh, mode in there. Not most, most of the regional model or models for travel uh, for uh, metropolitan area, uh, they probably only include cars and uh, public transport. May not necessarily have the pedestrian and bicycle or motorcycle in there. National model, uh, that, the, uh, that need to look at the uh, movement of people and goods in the country or in and out of the country, then air mode sometimes will be included too. There are three levels of modeling. On the top is what we refer to as a macroscopic model, which is mainly for understanding travel pattern and assessing the need for transportation infrastructure, uh, such as highways and public transport. The next level is mesoscopic level modeling. This level of modeling allows transportation planners to analyze traffic congestions and queues over time, especially during peak periods. And finally, there's this, uh, traffic simulation uh, the microscopic level of modeling. At this level, traffic engineers can lay out every details of the road and junctions of a study area and simulate the movement of individual vehicles and pedestrians. The cube module for macroscopic modeling is called Voyager, and the module for mesoscopic modeling is called Cube Avenue, and our traffic microsimulation module is called Cube Dynasim. Now let's talk about why people do travel demand modeling. A major application of macroscopic level modeling are the following. Uh, number one, transportation master plan. This is to look into the transportation infrastructure needed in future years at the more strategic level. Uh, many states, DOTs, many uh, nations will have a national transportation master plan or state transportation master plan. And that is for this level of modeling. Uh, th and secondly, uh, regional transportation improvement plan. This may, well, the first one, the master plan may be looking to at least 20, 30 years down the road. And the regional transportation improvement may be for five to 10 years, actually looking at the region, looking at the metropolitan area, uh, what kind of project to what level of implementation for infrastructure of, that we need to start implementing. And the next type of study will be new highway improvement feasibility studies. Now we are talking about individual project level now. Uh, when we design or when, before we construct, before we design a new expressway, for example, we would typically do this type of feasibility study to see uh, where the, what the alignments should look like, where, where do we need to have interchanges, and the traffic volume uh, requirement that would decide how many lanes that would des des uh, describe the uh, interchange layout, that sort of uh, things. And next type of application is for traffic and toll revenue forecast for toll expressway bridges and tunnels. Uh, this went beyond the feasibility study. 
these type of study typically are done for financing purposes. They're looking at uh, how much revenue can we can an investor, for example, expect from investing on this toll roads. Uh, personally, I have done in my career uh, at least 25, close to 30 toll road projects in the U.S. as well as in China and Asia uh, for investors looking at whether this toll road is worth investing or not. So that kind of study is more rigorously, more rigorous in terms of uh, the number and the revenue that is generated is, uh, because it's mainly for the financing purposes. Now, the application also, similar application uh, are also for, for the transit projects. Uh, for example, new transit services feasibility study, again, at the project planning level. Uh, and these could be for BRT, LRT, Metro. Uh, and then likewise, uh, just like toll road, uh, ridership and revenue forecast for transit services. Uh, for financing purposes, uh, buses, BRT, LRT, Metro for the financing purposes. And next type of application is more on the demand management side rather than providing additional infrastructure. Uh, congestion pricing studies are looking into how to uh, price the existing railway capacity in a congested area, normally CBD, uh, in order to control, to manage the, the traffic flow inside uh, the, the, the congestion pricing area. And most of you probably familiar with uh, Singapore, uh, that is the first city in the world uh, to implement congestion pricing. And uh, a few years ago, London has also done the same. And Hong Kong has also studied, uh, done a couple of, uh, for a couple of times, they have looking into congestion pricing for Hong Kong. And I have personally participated in, in one of those study in the uh, uh, late 90s. And the last application at the macroscopic level is traffic impact analysis for major development projects. This could be a, a development of a new town or redevelopment of a, uh, an old part of the city or bringing into uh, a major, major development project uh, for commercial, residential, uh, so typically we'll use travel demand modeling for that development area to looking into the traffic impact. Application of massoscopic level model, I probably need to speed up a little bit. Um, again, these are the, at the massoscopic level, we typically people would use the macroscopic level travel demand model and give it more detail and especially introducing time component. Uh, one distinction between the macro and the meso is macroscopic modeling is static. We're looking at the average condition of a day or a peak period of a, of a day. But at the mesoscopic level, we will introduce time component and to do dynamic traffic assignment. So in this case, it would allow us to look into the impact of upstream traffic congestion. We can measure queuing at intersection and merge points in the network. We can isolate secondary impacts from one intersection through another. And in order to uh, analyze ITS, Intelligent Transportation System Projects, uh, will, will you will require uh, mesoscopic time sensitive uh, dynamic uh, uh, modeling. Uh, we can also simulate alternative infrastructure, operational and policy changes, and emergency evacuation plans and st strategies. Test strategies to improve arrival and departure from stadium and other special events facilities. The last two bullets essentially is describing whenever there's a lot of people want to go to the same place at the same time or a lot of people leaving the same place at the same time that's where uh the challenges are for for managing traffic and so typically uh at the during the planning before the events uh you need to use uh, mesoscopic level modeling to help you come up with uh, strategies 
And finally, the the, the final level, the the uh, microscopic level modeling. Uh, typically, people will refer this to as a traffic micro simulation. Uh, and so here we're looking at detailed uh, intersection geometry design, traffic signal operation plan, traffic circulation plan for a major development site, road and traffic safety analysis. Uh, sometimes you want also want to simulate new bus rapid transit and light rail transit alignments, uh, multimodal transportation integrations, uh, parking facility circulation analysis, passenger and pedestrian movements. <coughs> and so typically, we'll be able to solve these problems. We simulate current and future impacts based on capacity and time and answering these questions. Uh, I will skip these slides and uh, you can come back and view them uh, later because I do want to control the time a little better. So why is Cube? What is Cube? Cube is the software for building travel demand model and doing all the application above that I have just described. Um, the way that I normally describe Cube is, is a toolbox similar to Microsoft Office. Everybody has Microsoft Office on their computer. And Office come with Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and these are all different tools doing different things. But these are linked together through uh, Microsoft window as a center interface. So you can go into Excel, create pie chart, bar chart, and then cut and paste those, uh, copy them into your Word document, uh, or copy them into your PowerPoint as your display and presentation. So similar concept, Cube is a comprehensive toolbox for transportation and land use modeling. And our center interface is called Cube Base. So QBase allow you to prepare data and QBase uh, uh, also come with QGIS for mapping purposes and it has reporting uh, functions and everything that you need to do in terms of model development and also running uh, various scenarios of your model, uh, scenario creation and management, that is all done with QBase. Most people, if you do all the application that I described above or at the macro level, you will use Cubebase and Cube Voyager for your urban, regional, and long distance macroscopic level forecasting and travel demand assignment. That's for map for passenger forecast. And there's a tool called Cube Analyst that's for uh, uh, estimating OD trip tables. And under Cube Voyager, there's a small letter called Cube Avenue. This is where that dynamic traffic assignment package uh, uh, modules for mesoscopic corridor study type of uh, analysis. So most people, the basic package were Cube Base, Cube Voyager, Cube Analyst. And if you also require doing dynamic traffic assignment uh, for mesoscopic modeling, then you will need Cube Voyager, uh, Cube Avenue, I'm sorry. Then we also have a module dedicated entirely to uh, modeling freight movement, what we call cube cargo. Okay, freight movements, the logic and the reason behind uh, them is totally different from how and why people move, uh, use our infrastructure. So we dedicated a uh, entire separate module to look into the freight uh, movements. And here's Cube Dynasim. And I mentioned earlier, Dynasim is a micro simulation software. Um, so it does the micro traffic micro simulation. And the last module in the Cube suite is called Cube Land. Land use is a important component uh, in terms of managing uh, traffic because I mentioned earlier the input to the travel demand model is population and jobs. Where do we get that? Typically we'll get that from the planning department of the government. And how do planners produce 
forecast for jobs and population into the future. Typically, they will run a land use model that forecasts that. So that's why we incorporated QBlan in here so we can run the land use model and the travel demand model uh, together. And, and also you can def define a uh, con uh, convergent criteria and you can cycle through between your QBlan and QVoyager model to get a better results. Uh, okay. A little bit about our user. Uh, City Lab was acquired again by Bentley last year. Uh, but before that, we have already uh, been uh, serving the travel demand modeling professional for many, many years. Uh, we have users in over 70 countries uh, in 2,500 urban areas. Uh, I show some of the uh, cities that are in, in Asia uh, because uh, my job is to promote Cube in Asia. So I, these, uh, not the Middle East, but essentially uh, most of the Asia. Uh, you can see New Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, uh, many uh, Indian cities are already using our software. Singapore, Hong Kong, Beijing, Taipei, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Macau, Bangkok, Japan, Manila, uh, Abu Dhabi, and at the national level, many countries at the DO, uh, Ministry of Transport are also using our software. Who are using Cube uh, in terms of type of agencies? Um, many of the uh, government agencies that are using Cube are because they need to manage or construct their transport infrastructure system. So on the highway side, uh, many of the Ministry of Transportation or State DOT, Ministry of Construction, Department of Highway, Department of Public Works. Uh, on the planning side, uh, cities and regional uh, government uh, in the U.S. and also some Asian cities too. You have metropolitan planning agencies, and many of them would will need to have their model, travel demand model for their uh, region, for their cities. Public Transport Authority, uh, for example, Mass Rapid Transit Authority of Thailand. These are agencies that are responsible for uh, planning, designing, construction, and operation of the uh, metro or bus network bus system. And public transport operators, for example, like Taipei Metro or Singapore uh, SMRT, uh, they all are our customers. And sometimes economic development agencies also use travel demand model to, to look into how they develop uh, their region or their city into the future and what kind of infrastructure, transport infrastructure will be needed uh, to support uh, the development. On the private side, uh, of course, I mentioned some of the application above. So. Toro operators, many of the Toro operators actually use uh, travel demand model, uses Cube uh, to look into uh, the traffic revenue of their facilities. And another group of uh, player is Toro investors. They don't necessarily operate the Toro, but they, they invest in the initial construction of the Toro. So they, they need, they use Cube to build model to look into the uh, feasibility or uh, uh, to advise themselves in terms of decision to uh, build it to invest or not. And likewise, on the transit side, public transport operators, uh, I sh and also engineering consulting company, transport consultancies, many of our friends are in the consulting area that uses Cube to provide service to the uh, government customers, clients. And then the last category, uh, numerous university and research institute throughout the world uh, are using Cube to do research and also to do teaching. And for uh, you, if, if you are university professors and you're not using Cube yet, I'll be happy to talk to you in terms of provide you uh, instructional license that you can use for all your students or your computer in the lab to run Cube, to do homework assignment, to do term project. So many of the 
universities in the world, including Asia, their civil engineering department professors are using CUBE. Uh, architecture department, urban planning department. So we have many good friends in the uh, academia. Okay. Problems we help solve. Okay, we predict trips, mode of um, mode of route taken, considering different policies, land use, and infrastructure scenarios. How much induced demand will be generated if a road is expanded? How many passengers will be lost if bus service are cut back? How many people will be priced off if tolls are implemented? How much traffic will a new development generate? How much demand will I lose if I raise shipping cost for my customer? How many commodities move by truck in a region? Um, because travel demand model forecasts future traffic volumes and from traffic volume, a lot of time people would then input that into uh, emission uh, to analyze uh, uh, emission, to analyze uh, traffic uh, pollutions, air pollutions induced by the uh, traffic. Uh, another areas of uh, application will be, uh, or problems that we solve, we predict the effects of zoning, policies, transportation on land use, land value, and household and employment location. And this is typically answered using cube land. Uh, the question you're asking may be how an area develops by adding infrastructure. What is the attractiveness and accessibility? What will be the rent and land value? What are the effects of new airport in the land value? What is the effect on new policies and zoning? What is the optimum location of subsidies? These type of questions can be answered using cube land. And much more, you know, bicycle routing planning, parking lot demand and simulation and operation layout of the parking lot, parking facility, evacuation planning, uh, network vulnerability testing, mobility analysis, car sharing services design, uh, and so on. Okay. See, so I like to pause here because um, I have just described, uh, give you some basic idea of the tra what travel demand modeling is and what Cube is and who are using Cube for what purposes. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd like to pause and maybe have you all have a time to kind of think about what you have just heard and answer this question. Would you like a Bentley representative to contact you for further discussion? Because my time is limited and there's a ton of information I would love to share with you, uh, but I'm limited by time. Uh, and would you like to contact Bentley uh, for technical discussion, product demonstration, pricing information, or just think you know, you're not really not interested at this time? Uh, you, you may uh, kind of click one of these four options and hit submit at this time. And after this, I will then move on to share with you just very quickly some uh, some picture uh, examples of some of these uh, models that I have just mentioned. So again, would you like Bentley representative to contact you for further discussion on technical discussion, on product demonstration, on pricing information, or just think you are not uh, interested at this time. You may do so right now. I will uh, maybe pause for five seconds. Okay, thank you very much. Now let's look at some of the examples uh, at the macroscopic modeling using Cube Voyager. Um, for example, this is a uh, model structure of uh, City of Beijing's model. 
Uh, this is courtesy from our customer, Beijing Municipal, Municipal Institute of Planning and Design. Uh, and this is for their latest model update, was done in 2016. Uh, one good thing about Cube is the flowchart structure allowed open and transparent view of the model structure. You, so you don't need to be an expert in modeling to actually come here and, and read through this and find out uh, how the model uh, is laid out and how it uh, the whole thing is linked together. And earlier I mentioned about the input data. So this is show you uh, the data that was used and collected and used in the latest update of Beijing model. Uh, this category is HIS stands for household interview survey. So they conducted 40,000 household interview survey. They interviewed 40,000 household and interviewed 100,000 uh, person individuals. So there's a big undertaking. So modeling it's not an easy task if you want to do a, for example, a, a city uh, like Beijing. And and one new thing about nowadays, a lot of cities are actually able to incorporate the, this new, what we call big data. We're in the big data era. And one transport big data that a lot of people are uh, using now is data from the cell phone. So they were able to tap into these resources. So almost 8.6 million trips per day from the uh, cell phone data. Uh, they also use GPS track of taxis and, and the, the boundary, like a lot of these are toll, toll plazas. Uh, they were able to, able to get travel pattern data from the uh, toll plazas. And on the public transport side, uh, I think all the ma major cities now have IC card, like pavement fare card, and, and that capture 1.4 million per day. Okay, and there's uh, other data and TAZs. Uh, yeah. And the second major input to a model is network representation of highway or pub public transport network. And this show you an example of what they look like. So uh, in, 20, in, in 2004, uh, Beijing has only two thousand was divided into two hundred zones, and this is their highway network. By 2010, they have 1,911 zones. By the latest model update in 2016, they are up to 2,006 zones, and this is the uh, layout of their highway network. Another example is a national level model. Uh, this is uh, Thailand's national model. Uh, for their Office of Transportation Planning. And at the top level, they have passenger model and freight model. Uh, if you zoom down into freight model, you see uh, the next level of the freight model. Uh, again, in the cube, you have flow charts for the model structure and layout. You can click and open any of these models. Uh, and this is the zone system of the Thailand's freight model highway network, rail network, waterway network, and also, of course, air uh, network that I run, ran out of room, so I didn't put in air network. Uh, and this is the cube model structure for the, I'm sorry, for the Mumbai metropolitan region model, courtesy of IIT Bombay. Uh, we have many good friends there at IIT Bombay. And Mumbai metropolitan region model, the highway network and the traffic analysis zones. And in Taiwan, uh, the Ministry of Transportation and Communication, they have an uh, Institute of Transportation that um, are in charge of planning and strategic level of the, the uh, entire Taiwan's transport infrastructure. And they're a long time cube users and this is their model network. And, and this is a Yangon network uh, courtesy of MVA Asia. These consulting firm are, are uh, uh, very good friends and long time customer. And so I, I'm actually sharing their work uh, with all of you. And Trans Java Expressway model, courtesy of SAP. Uh, they basically have laid out 
or the toll road and highway network for all the major islands in uh, in, in Indonesia, Sumatra Island, Java Island, uh, Kalimantan, Sulawesi, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And this is a public transport application, a feasibility study for a monorail project in Makassar, the third largest city in Indonesia. Okay, this uh, slide is out of place. Okay. <clears throat> and in Vietnam, uh, in addition to having the Ho Chi Minh City University of Transport in Vietnam using our uh, CUBE to teach, over the years there are also many internationally funded projects conducted by international consultants uh, in Vietnam, including multi-model transport model for Vietnam, that's again national level, uh, national model, and Ho Chi Minh City metro matter plan models uh, for, as two examples. And there are many, many other examples, so i just pick a few to share. And at the mesoscopic level simulation using Q Avenue, <clears throat> and this is a uh, Abu Dhabi uh, application, it's just a still shot. Uh, they were asking this question, when will queues occur and how far will they span? And I'm sure every cities in the world are asking the same question question and they decided to use cube voyager and they already they were already using cube voyager for their macroscopic model and a few years ago they decided to adopt cube avenue to start looking into more detail in terms of answering this question when will queues occur and how far will they span uh, another example would be taiwan uh, a few years ago they took their macroscopic strategic model and extracted out just the expressway north south and e uh, east west expressway to do a mesoscopic assignment typically look into this level of simulation at the uh, interchange level now you can start to see how how queues are formed and during uh, peak hours uh, at the mesoscopic simulation level. And these are all still shots from uh, from video uh, because uh, it it takes a lot more room. Uh, my my file size of my PowerPoint will be too big to upload, so I have to delete all the video and only upload the steel shots, but just think that these are moving vehicles. And this is an application in Virginia. Uh, so this model covered the entire state. And this is the evacuation model uh, to simulate when hurricane comes. This is the Atlantic seaboard on the east coast of the United States. Every year there will be hurricanes that will come and then if they're forecast to come into this area, to land in this area, then people will have to be evacuated and to, to drive for the inland. When you have millions of people evacuating, leaving the same city at the same time, he heading the same direction, then you always have problems. And so this is a study looking into evacuation. And I find this a very interesting <coughs> application. Uh, I'll go very quickly. Um, Manila Waterway. A few years ago, I said, Waterway, I want to buy a cube. I said, what are they doing? And essentially, this is very smart. They they have a traffic, they hire a couple of traffic engineers, transport planners, and then they actually do the macroscopic model for Manila, and they also do the uh, mesoscopic uh, uh, model for it. So essentially what they're doing is they're testing simultaneous work locations. When they send crew out to replace old pipe or to f put in new pipe, they always have to block the traffic. So rather than being uh, kind of compliant by the residents, they actually do the homework ahead of time. They test simultaneous location, analyze which work phasing will produce the least impact, and then present the results to various stakeholders. So I think that's very smart. It, it got me to think almost everyone that need to go out and block the street doing work uh, in, in the city need to actually apply this approach. And finally, dynamic uh, kind of uh, micro simulation, you can do cube dynasm. Uh, dynasm can simulate every vehicle in detail. 
Uh, and our strengths typically, is, especially, is in the parking facility planning and operations. I don't have time to expand. I will just quickly run through these slides. And this example of multi-model container port, you got a port uh, operation, you got rail, you got trucks coming in to take away and or bring in con containers. Uh, pedestrian simulation for railway stations. Uh, and this is a high-speed rail station. Um, kind of inbound and outbound passenger, how do they flow, uh, how do you lay out your uh, station platforms and uh, and so on. Uh, toll plaza, I guess, very simple toll plaza simulation. Uh, BRT simulations, LRT simulation, this is the actual uh, video and this is our simulation using Cube Dynasim. Um, and finally, again, an example coming out from uh, our, our friends in the Philippines, uh, Stride, our good friends there. A few years ago, they took on a uh, feasibility study to look at evaluating improvements along C5 in Metro Manila through multi-level traffic modeling. So this is the C5 project, feasibility, a typical feasibility study, and they use macroscopic level Voyager modeling and Avenue and Dynasim all in the same project. Uh, and so at the Dynasim level, they simulate uh, the alignment for almost all the options, and this is one of the options. Okay, uh, very quickly here we're coming out with a brand new version that will be totally new uh, so if you are a current user uh, I just want to alert you that a, a brand new version will be coming out very soon uh, you have totally different uh, interface and GIS and our customer always complains about speed because the more complicated the network is, the more zones we have or you have. Uh, runtime is always an issue, so we're doing a major improvement on the runtime. Uh, give you an example: a Florida State model, statewide model, uh, would reduce runtime from five hours and twenty minutes to just twenty-four minutes. So that uh, shows you the magnitude of the improvement. Um, so finally, Beyond Cube. What's Beyond Cube? Cube. Um, there's a lot of new data sources available now. In the in the future, uh, in the past, we're having problem with what do we do it because of the availability of the data is is not very much and the quality is not very good. But now we have a lot of big data now, so we came up with a approach using cubes and essentially uh, streetlytics is a new thing that we develop which basically takes in all the existing information on traffic counts, on mobile data, demographic data, uh, speed data, and put that into a learn, uh, learning engine, and we want to bring data to insights. So, Streetlytics right now is available for the USA and some part of uh, Canada, but we're ready to roll out to, uh, to the rest of the world. Okay. Um, it provides our customer with data. Cube is a mo is a tool for you to do create model and and use the model result for your different analysis. But Streetlytics is not a software; it's more like a software as a service. It provides data. Uh, essentially, we develop a model for the entire USA that covers every road that has 25 miles per hour speed limit or greater. And it provides hourly volume by direction, origin, destination by block group, and provide trip purpose data uh, by car or bicycle, demographic data, routes, um, temporal segmentation. A lot of time when we do the modeling, we're only looking at annual average daily traffic, uh, but traffic, varies every day. Traffic changes all the time. So rather than just having an average daily traffic, now Streetlytics actually provides traffic estimates by hour, by day type, Monday through Thursday, uh, or Friday traffic, Saturday traffic, Sunday traffic, they're all very different. And also by month, 
traffic in January versus traffic in July is all uh, very different. And at the junction level, we provide turning and weaving movements. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, a main function of a transportation agency, for example, city traffic department, region, state DOT, toll road operator, public transport operator, the main function for them is to provide mobility and mitigate negative impacts caused by traffic. For example, delays, noise pollution, air pollution, traffic collisions caused by vehicular traffic. Whether an agency is successful or effective, depending on the level of details and accuracy of the traffic volume data they use as a basis for all their works. I mean, traffic count is a basic data that, that the agency design uh, uh, depend on to, on the design and construction and maintenance and operation estimating uh, traffic accident risk, uh, uh, pavement life cycle, that kind of thing. They're all based on usage and usage is represented by traffic volumes. So Cube and Streetlytics together provide a much more detailed and accurate traffic estimate, both for the current and future condition. Using Cube slash Streetlytics together, with other Bentley products provides planners, engineers, and decision makers a total infrastructure solution that can quickly reflect changes in land use, demographic, mode choice, and any other factors that may affect the traffic on the agency's roadway and transit network. So with that, I want to thank you for your attention and um, if there are any questions, I'm sure there are probably questions coming in already. I'll be happy to answer as much as I can. Thank you very much. I'll hand the time over back to uh, my colleagues. Thank you, Luke. Uh, we have got uh, good number of questions, so we may not be able to answer all, but we'll try to address uh, a majority of them. So Luke, there is, uh, 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 there is a question by uh, Sushmita from Indian Institute of Technology, and she's asking what is the purpose of Cube Cluster? Okay, very good. I didn't have time to touch upon that. Thank you for asking this question. Cube Cluster is a tool to assist with parallel uh, computing to reduce runtime. So with Cube Cluster, you, you can divide up the task uh, between multiple processor, multiple computers uh, for parallel processing uh, to, to reduce the runtime. And currently is a additional tool that a uh, customer can purchase, uh, but pretty soon, because now we're part of Bentley, we're having a, a, a new pricing structure, a new packaging structure that's kind of, that will be out soon. Uh, at that point, that uh, the, the new pricing structure under that cube cluster will actually become standard, uh, part of the standard package. Okay. okay, we have one. We have another question from University of Morotua. So the question is: uh, uh, Is GIS needed to be pre-installed? Any GIS application could work, or only with a specific GIS application? Okay, uh, Cube worked very closely, at least under the current version of Cube. We have been uh, uh, kind of partner with ESRI very closely over the last few years. And so embedded inside Cube Base, the Cube GIS is actually ArcGIS of Esri company. So that's why we are very seamlessly uh, kind of integrated with uh, Esri product. Um, so in Cube, using Cube, you can read and read in uh, ArcGIS shapefile, geodatabase, and the uh, result from Q can also be read directly by, by ArcGIS uh, 
So, and and once you your shapefile, I'm sure there's other GIS uh, application can also uh, be integrated together. And there's a next question by uh, Guy Russo from Atlanta Regional Company. Does Cube integrate well with the uh, Activity Sim? Activity Sim. Okay, so that that may be an activity-based model. Uh, I don't know exactly in the detail of those, but I know there's quite a few activity-based model in the U.S. are actually using Cube uh, at the last step to do uh, tra traffic assignment. Uh, activity-based models typically are more complicated. They require a lot of custom-made uh, kind of programming and modeling steps uh, and and cube has been has been used in many of these uh, activity based model at the last step to do uh, to, to traffic assignment but I went to it and have our technical support department my colleagues to look into the specific of this question and then email back the answer to you uh, there's a question by mr. Bushan. In microscopic, that is dynamic modeling, does driving behavior take into consideration? Uh, uh, yes, I mean, traffic simulation, micro simulation is especially a uh, simulating the vehicle movement and the vehicle vehicle doesn't move by itself, you know, is, is controlled by driver. Uh, so it has to take into driver, driver behavior into account. Uh, there is a question by Sushmita from Indian Institute of Technology. Is Cube uh, uh, forecast based on four-stage modeling framework or activity-based travel demand modeling framework? Okay. Again, Cube is a software tools, and it can be used to implement any models based on m most of the existing modeling methodology. Okay. So Cube doesn't just do four step. Most people in the world are now doing four step model and they use cube to implement their four step model. Um, but like I said earlier, there are some are going into activity base, some are going into land use and uh, transport integrated modeling. And those can also be implemented by cube. In fact, we have a uh, kind of like a activity-based model that we develop, sort of like a uh, example of uh, activity-based model using Cube. So to your question, I think the answer is yes. Uh, Cube essentially can be used to do all kinds of different model, uh, model methodologies. Okay. So, so there's a following question to that. What algorithm is used for forecasts? in keywords? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean, because uh, because each step has uh, the multiple algorithm, multiple, multiple is, is a complicated process, okay? Uh, it's, so maybe we can take this offline to, to kind of discuss more detail in terms of what you mean at which steps, okay? Uh, there's a question for more more detailed technical information yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a question from Anusha from NIT Bangalore. So what she is, uh, does the micro simulation model is based on car following models? If yes, does these models allow us to incorporate heterogeneous traffic characteristics of Indian traffic? <laughs> yeah, for micro simulation, of course, you need to be able to create your own, well, at macro level also, you know, uh, the underlying principle and the models behind it uh, may be universal, but in terms of actually implementing, building the model, you have to be able to localize. So the answer is yes, you need to be able to uh, collect data uh, from your observed data and knowing how the uh, vehicles are running in, on on the street in you know in India and then try to mimic try to duplicate that in your software so that's what the software does allow you to adjust the parameter uh, 
adjust your assumptions and uh, using the capability provided in the software to uh, calibrate the closest possible to the reality on the on the ground. Uh, again, so many of these require much more detailed technical uh, answer that I will uh, look into it and provide uh, information in that area. So there is a question from Mr. Ramajan from AECOM. Is it possible to export highway and PT output network into a GIS platform rather than taking shape files and joining the attributes externally? Uh, the answer is yes, of course. Uh, if you are using ArcGIS, though, though, so that would be seamless uh, because uh, ArcGIS is embedded inside Cube. Uh, has an en we have a we're using the Arc ArcGIS engine. Yeah. There is a question: What program programming language is compatible for Cube? Uh, a lot of people using Python. Uh, Cube itself is it, it, it has scripting capability. And let me back off a little bit. Cube. Uh, also has scripting capability, and it's a very, very uh, flexible scripting that people use our scripting to, you know, in fact, I heard some of our power user actually use exclusively uh, Cube Voyager scripting to do everything, especially managing big data set, like our user in Beijing. Uh, if you remember, there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, bicycle, okay, uh, running around and being picked up at one place and drop off at another part of the city. And uh, so it's a huge database in terms of these bicycle usage. And our, our uh, user in Beijing actually use Voyager scripting to, to manage those data. Uh, but again, you can write, you can use C or Python. In Cube 7, we will have a much even even closer integration with uh, Python scripts. Uh, there's one more question from University of Morotua. The question is, uh, can Cube integrate with deep learning models for real-time tracking? Uh, that's what we're doing to a certain extent right now within uh, Streetlytics, uh, because, but it's currently Cube itself does not have that, but uh, that's part of the future development direction that we're heading. Um, kind of machine learning type of thing. We 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 uh, develop a lot of new things. Well, Streetlytics is based on Cube. It was first running Cube, but then uh, because of the need of it and the and the data availability and the scale and the detail level of it, we had developed tons of new uh, uh, tools and techniques from Streetlytics, and gradually, I think as new version of Cube comes out, we will start putting those new things into Cube in the future. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's a question by Bahuas University. Can we integrate different cities network for a better solution in a new developing city? Uh, you want me to read it? If you think about network, it's a little, I think if you want to, I have to know more about the kind of the reasoning behind your question. If just the network, if you're talking about what certain cities are doing well, and then of course you can learn from that and, and then um, and then implement that in the new city, or you can also learn from the things that they didn't do well and try not, not to do those in your new cities. Uh, but I don't know whether that answers your question. Hmm. So is uh, street analytics available in India? Uh, currently not, but uh, uh, we'll would be happy to discuss uh, with uh, a customer that needs it and then develop, you know, from scratch. It would take some time and some initial investment. Uh, but I've been pushing Streetlytics in Asia for the last couple of years. And for, for major cities as like Singapore, Hong Kong, Taipei, 
Bangkok, if you have enough coverage of your city in terms of traffic counts, and if you can also provide to a certain extent GPS tracks of some vehicles or uh, cell phone data of some of the vehicles and people, then then we'll be able to develop a good street database for, for the city. Uh, so this is a question from Acom. Uh, it was mentioned that Cube 7 will be updated with Google or Bing map background. Is it updated? Uh, Cube 7 will have a lot of things. It's a totally new uh, kind of interface and uh, you have a, a new GIS system. Uh, we'll be happy to provide more uh, information uh, offline. Does Cube make use of transport demand elasticity method for traffic forecast? It's a question from Akhil Raj from Intercontinental. Uh, can you repeat that again, please? Does Cube make use of transport demand elasticity method for traffic forecast? Uh, elasticity, I again, I have to kind of explore uh, and understand what you mean by electricity. Cube is a software again, but uh, for example, if you're talking about um, elasticity, price elasticity, something like in Toro, we talk about toll sensitivity. So a lot of time we have to run, run Cube run model, uh, setting different toll to see how traffic responds to uh, the changes in the toll and to find the optimum toll. So that kind of sensitivity will be required. And then uh, uh, but through collecting data and then to, so a lot of time do we survey on, or state the preference survey, that kind of things to allow us to uh, estimate the toll sensitivity or sensitivity to, to travel time to pricing, that kind of things. Yeah, of course, uh, tool cube will be a, a, a tool that allow you to do that. There is a question by Mega. So any technique available for transport modeling of greenfield area without any population and employment data? Uh, greenfield area. Well, you kind Without of have to estimate. Employment. <laughs> if there's no population, no employment, then you, you don't have you don't have traffic. Then you don't have problem. I guess if for greenfield area, there's nothing currently. Uh, if you want to look into the future uh, of, then you need to develop some kind of scenario, and the scenario. Uh, different development scenario will come with different population distribution and the job distribution estimates. Uh, so that will be required. And a lot of time that will come from the land use model, from the developer, they decide what they want to build uh, and and the, uh, how much they want to build in certain area. So that will be required before before we can doing we can do any traffic forecast. No population, no jobs, no traffic. There's a question from ages by Mr. Shashwat Srivastava. Trips of what distance are considered while collecting data from cell phones in Beijing model? For example, there are trips of less than 500 meters also, which can be either mod motorized or non-motorized as well. So what lower level of minimum distance is applied so that any moment qualifies to be identified? Yeah, th th there's really no uh, standard or limit on that. Again, there's a lot of, of, even though cell phone give us a lot of new data sources, but uh, how to use that is, again, an, another task. You need to understand what the data is, yeah. So it, it really depends on your on the, the size of your zones. And so if you have, it, it, essentially, you, you want to take into account those data that give you inter-zonal trips. You know? And if you are too small, 
the distance is too small, essentially it's within most of the zone, then then you will not be able to load it into your highway network or transit network. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, kind of issues around it in terms of deciding uh, how close, how to define it as a trip uh, from your cell phone data or any other travel pattern data. Okay. Okay, so this is the last question which we are taking. What software of Cube may be required for the study of traffic for heavy infrastructure, transportation projects like metros? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, can you repeat that again? Uh, this is the last question what I'm asking. Uh, the question is, uh, what software of Cube may be required for the study of traffic for heavy infrastructure transportation like metros? Okay, so you're talking about which module? Uh, the basic module will be Voyager you know, for heavy infrastructure, I mean, highway construction. Uh, then then Cube Voyager will be the uh, the module that you will use. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. So I guess that's... Uh, that's uh, the all questions we can t take as of now because uh, we have reached the limit of the time and uh, we thank you all for attending this webinar and uh, we'll try to reach back to some of the questions which we have not answered okay very good thank you very much thank you all for participating and i'm looking forward to having more interaction with you feel free to email me or uh and or come back here to review what we have and review what we have in the resources and then uh and, and then contact us if you have further questions thank you very much